Senator James Inhofe of Oklahoma. Senator, good to have you. Hey, nice to be with you, Chris. So, if they filibuster the Democrats, should McConnell exercise the nuclear option? Uh, yes. Are you concerned about the precedent that that sets? Well, no, I'm really not, because uh, he, it was unprecedented that you would change the rules to start with. He did that. And, uh, you know, I was with Gorsuch yesterday. I've never been around a guy that is more qualified. And everyone agrees. Look, all of these guys that are complaining about him right now, they all voted for him uh, to be at the 10th Circuit, and no one opposed him. And, and so right now it's a political game right. and whatever is necessary. I would just say this, Chris. Yes, sir. He's going to be confirmed. Uh you know, just a, a point of, uh, of fact on it, you know, Merrick Garland got uh, an easy pass when he was put up for a judgeship also. He was unopposed. They will tell you, and you know this, Senator, it's very different measuring a man or a woman for Supreme Court versus an appellate or a district court. So there's a different appraisal process here, isn't there? Well, no, the difference that I see is that he was put up during the tail end of, of a, an administration. Uh, right now, this is the very first of an administration, and there's a lot of precedent for that, that uh, someone in his last uh, final months should not be making the determination as to who's going to be uh, the, the, the confirmed nominee. Wasn't it in January uh, that Garland first came up and it was just about the delay game? Yeah. No, it was actually uh, at a time frame when it would have been uh, would have actually set a precedent, and uh, and so we were on s uh, sound grounds, and I didn't have any problem with that particular nominee, but uh, this one is is the nominee. He will be confirmed. You think Garland should have been given a vote or no? Uh, not, because that's what's playing into this, uh, right? And you said uh, you pointed out earlier Harry Reid set a precedent, true, but there was a carve out for Supreme Court justices in that. So this would be, in fact, a new manifestation yeah, of the nuclear see, option. Yeah, Chris, I would argue with you on that because uh, it's, it's, can you change the rules? Can you break the rules of the, of the Senate? And it was, that was the issue, not uh, how far should it go, but it, it, they have the power to do that. He did it. And I remember when that happened, I thought that's gonna come back and haunt him. That time is here. That's what Mitch McConnell said at the time was, they will regret um, that they did this and now this is the situation they're in. But one other thing, there are a lot of Democrats who do have opposition points to Gorsuch. Uh, they don't like the way he answered questions or what he failed to answer. They don't like some of his rulings. There is substantive resistance to him. It's not all political. Well, I have to say this, the same ones and a lot of them uh, that I've heard making that statement were the ones that didn't make the statement before. So he's already been there. He's already answered the questions. And I thought he did a fabulous job. I watched uh, as much of it as I could. So let's just wait and see what happens. As I say, he's going to be confirmed and, uh, and I will and, and America should be rejoicing. All right, let's talk about uh, the recent environmental rollback uh, that the administration says will help the coal industry. Critics say uh, that this is putting uh, short-term economic interests in front of long-term environmental protection interests and that you're not going to rebuild the coal sector anyway by rolling this what? back. Environmental yeah. restrictions aren't your problem. Innovation is your problem. Pricing yeah. around the world is your problem with why you don't have more coal jobs. Well, Chris, I was listening to your previous uh, uh, guest, and I think he's really being a little bit generous. Let's keep in mind that this has been a war on fossil fuels. This has been Obama's war on fossil fuels that has endured longer than just the time that he was president. He started that a long time ago. Fossil fuels is not just coal, it's coal, oil, and gas. Now, he's thrown in there nuclear, too. Now, here's the problem that you have. Right now, our country is dependent upon nuclear, coal, oil, and gas for 89 percent mm -hmm. of its ability to run this machine called America. Now, if he's successful in doing away with it, uh, how do you run the machine called America? Secondly, you've got to keep in mind this t thing that he did in, in Paris, and this is very significant for some reason. People either don't know about it or they don't care about it, but he made the statement that we're going, every country is going to say, what are we going to do with our own reduction of uh, fossil fuels? He said, in the United States, I commit, we'll reduce fossil fuels by 27% by 2030. Well, 
Three problems with that, Chris. First of all, it can't be done. We immediately went to the EPA. They agreed it can't be done. And then secondly, if you remember Lisa Jackson, who was the first nominee or the first uh, confirmed uh, director of the EPA under Obama, she said, well, it wouldn't make any difference anyway if you, if you did it, because the problem is not in the United States. The problem is China and India and Mexico and other places. And the third thing is, that the United States Supreme Court has stepped in and they agree with us. And so that, that is just not what he did, uh, and I'm glad that the president did what he did, but in so far as the commitment that was made right. by Obama in Paris, it's meaningless. Right, but it, look, I mean, taking all of your points as true for the sake of argument, this was about the ambition of being better, being cleaner, uh, having more sustainable businesses and transitioning away uh, from those that are seen as having negative impacts on the environment. It wasn't simply to kill jobs. Uh, Obama wanted to replace jobs, a difficult task. And you seem to ignore that motivation here that these industries can and do uh, attribute to global warming and to the excesses of, um, of human uh, behavior that add to global warming. And that's a well, big part of the motivation. Well, see, I've, I've argued this over and over again. Let's keep in mind the amount that that would contribute to global warming, even by their own figures, and I'm talking about the EPA right now, would be 0.2 percent. It's not even measurable. So people who like to say, say that this is the major cause for uh, global warming, first of all, this is a debate that's going on. And we, you know, science is questioned and all of that. But the bottom line is, even if you're right or if they are right, I don't. I think you're quoting them. Uh, it, it still doesn't make any difference. Well, I mean, the science, zero point two percent. The scientific community doesn't have much of a debate about the bigger issue about the well, human impact I of global argue, warming. You know, you no, have an you, overwhelming no, no, majority of scientists. Argue, I will argue that. I will argue. I know, that. but the it doesn't mean that the facts are in your favor. I understand that you argue it. It doesn't mean that it's a compelling argument. Well, it is a compelling argument, but we're not having it right now. I'd be glad to have it with you because right now, we we have a lot of the really fine scientists are, are questioning this. In fact, they're even laughing about it. And we also laughing about what? No, let me. Let, uh, I'll tell you what. The IPCC is the United Nations. That's the science that has been behind this. We all understand that. We also know that they have been totally discredited with climate gate. This happened in 19, 2009, and, and you know, and I think everyone was understanding of that at the time. And right now, it, it, even though they've been totally discredited, they are the science that is behind this. And this is a different discussion altogether, because what happened yesterday is something that is a to, is is not just a coal thing. It's trying to end the war on fossil fuels, right. and I think he's done it. Well, I don't know. You, those are your words, the war on fossil fuels. But isn't it kind of all related that this is about moving away from industries that are seen as bad for the environment, as contributing to global warming, and trying to find new sources of energy and industries that could create jobs and be safer? I mean, in your own state of Oklahoma, you've seen negative impact from these industries maybe affecting your own earth quake content well you no know, the the uh, the president has been talking about this for a long period of time and others have too the bottom line though is you got to run the machine called america and you can't do it without fossil fuels and and nuclear and and this is something that everyone does understand although they deny it uh, the president has been in denial i'm, I'm talking about uh, obama now for a number of years in, in, in trying to come up with something that says we can rely on renewable fuels. They're out there, the technology. Well, maybe someday it will be out there. Today, it's not, Chris. They don't have the technology right now to run America without, uh, without fossil fuels and nuclear. And the larger question is, how do you ever get there if you don't ever start the process? But you're right, there are lots of big conversations to have on this issue, Senator, and you're always welcome here to have them on New Day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chris. Allison. Okay, another